Yo. Yeah. What's the Lord saying? What's the Lord saying? Say? Mm -hmm. Why? What is the Lord saying? Well, um, in John chapter 2, um, I think it's the first time. I was reading this morning about how. So that's what the Lord is saying. That's what the Lord today. is saying today. Really? Yeah. What are you expecting? Like, my son, that today. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Isn't that how the Lord speaks to us? <laughs> Hi, my name is Chrissy Otin Yabua, and I'm the International Director for Excellent Youth Outreach. I've been working as a youth minister for over 20 years. And one of the questions that I always come across with many young people is this. How do I know that this is God's voice? How do I know how God is talking to me? Well, many times I get this question because many young people are facing very, very great challenges and they need to make a decision. They need to decide who to marry, what school to go to, what stand to make in life or a certain state in life. And I always tell them that many times when you are seeking God's voice in such times, when it's very, very crucial for you to hear, you are highly not able to hear. Hearing God's voice has to be a habit, has to be something you cultivate, has to be because of a relationship you have with God. If you read the Bible in John chapter 10, verse 4, Jesus is the one speaking. He said that he brings his sheep out. They follow him because they, hear, they know him. They follow him and they hear his voice because they know him. Remember that it didn't say they follow him because they just hear his voice. They follow him because they know his voice. This means that if you want to know God's voice, it's not just about looking out to hear, but it's rather about looking out to know the person whose voice you want to hear. And that means that cultivating a relationship with God over a period of time. Over the years, I've learned that there are three ways by which you can actually get to know God's voice. One of them is by the Word of God. The Word of God is the clear Word of God. The Bible, is containing, the Bible contains the Word of God clearly. And in many situations, you can use the Word of God to rule out other voices which may not be God's voice. For example, the Word of God is clear about what the kind of person you are supposed to marry. You must not be unevenly yoked with an unbeliever. So if you have to choose between a believer and a non-believer, the Word of God gives you a clearer direction where to go to. But there are certain situations where the Word of God may be silent on it. For example, you may have three, um, three believers who want to seek your hand in marriage. The Word of God says that you can marry anybody, any man of your choice, but that person must be a believer. So in, in the first category, they are all believers. Now, the next category is that the Bible says you can choose to marry the person of your choice. But it goes beyond that. Knowing the Word of God is not enough to just know the voice of God. The second point to help you know the voice of God is the Holy Spirit. And by this, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 12, Jesus is the one speaking. He said, there are many things I wish to have told you. He was speaking to his disciples. But they are too much for you to bear at this stage. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will reveal things to you. He will teach you into all truth and reveal things that you have not known. It means that there are certain things like the gray areas that the Holy Spirit can help you to know what direction to take and what God may be telling you to do. It says that he, Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit. He said, he will not say anything outside what I will tell you. It means that you must also now learn to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The third reason, which is very common, is by experience. You would not know how God speaks to you personally, specifically, unless you keep practicing it. What do I mean? You may go out today because you are conscious and you want to know what God is saying. You might have a notch in your feet. You, may have a, you might have a notch in your mind, in your thoughts. Instead of going left, go right. That time you do not know whether it is God's voice or it's not God's voice. It might be just your mind. It might be Satan himself. But if you decide to take that notch and you go right, whatever outcome that you receive in going right, can prove to you that that was God's voice or not. And over time, with several experiences like that, you are going to know precisely what God's voice is and what God's voice is not. So with these, with these three things, I believe that anybody can begin 
to walk and know God's voice and know the will of God for their lives. Do not wait until you're in a crisis moment and you go to church and you're trying to see God's voice. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10, it says, There are many voices as it were, and none of them is without significance. In the time of crisis, where your heart has gone for that man because of his voice, because of the car he has, it is difficult to know what God is saying. In the time of crisis, when your friends are speaking to you about several things, you may not know exactly what God's voice is because all these voices in the world have a significance in your life. But when you have stuck close to God and you have developed and cultivated your relationship with Him and you have used these three things as I've told you about, you begin to know what God's voice is. Thank you very much. And I pray that you'll go and explore God's voice and walk in the will of God always. God bless you.